Hey everyone, it's Javi here and in this video I want to show you a personal little trick that I use to prototype responsive designs across multiple breakpoints without having to leave Figma. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Javi and I make weekly videos about product design skills, principles and practices to help you bring your ideas to life and build digital products. If that sounds like something that you're interested in, don't forget to subscribe. If you are working on a cross-device application, you have to be able to communicate how that design is going to adapt to different screen sizes. The single prerequisite that you need in order to do that is to know what your breakpoints are. Now, in this video, we're gonna be using the Chakra UI specification for breakpoints. Chakra is a modern component library that is very popular among product teams building React applications and it comes with a default set of breakpoints that map out to common screen sizes. In my previous video, we used those to design the form that you're seeing here. These are a great starting point unless you already have some breakpoints defined in your design. So without further ado, let's jump straight into Figma and do some prototyping. As you can see, we have the form breakpoints that we made in the last video. And here you can see we have a base breakpoint, we have large, we have medium, small, and then I made an additional one just to showcase how the form should react to substantially smaller screen sizes where the form itself is going to be larger than the width that the screen is making available for us, right? So the extra thing that I did here is first of all, I prototyped these designs as they are. So you can see that between each of these, there's going to be a smart animate that is going to be handled on click. And this is just so I could show you what that animation would look like without doing what we're about to do in the next step. And in order to show you how that looks like, I went ahead and did a little bit of a video recording. So we could actually see this in the video without having any form of lag. And as you can see, this is how it looks like. It's a little bit clunky because the frames on their own are of different width size. And so Figma is not handling that too well in order to give us a smooth animation. And the second and most relevant point when it comes to this responsiveness prototype is that we're not really getting to see the animation flow as the width is actually adjusting in between those breakpoints, right? So we only get to see the final step after we reach the breakpoint, but there's nothing in between. And that is very valuable information that we need to be able to convey when presenting something like this. And what I'm about to show you is what's gonna solve that problem for us. And it's gonna make your prototype a lot more interactive and a lot more useful when it comes to being consumed by your engineering team. The first thing I did in case you haven't already noticed is I've been keeping an outer frame that's going to always be the same width. And as you can see, I call it canvas, right? So inside this canvas layer, let me bring this up to make sure you can see it. So all of these are called canvas because there's an outer layer called canvas that's holding, that's containing all of the layers of our design within it. And this canvas is going to be present across all of these breakpoints. So if I move here to canvas, you can see that it's also going to be containing all of our breakpoints. And unlike what you saw above, where each of these breakpoints has an entirely separate name, one of the prerequisites of Smart Animate is that you need to have the layer naming be the same between two screens that are going to be connected through that interaction. So as you can see, I am keeping the container name here as base. Actually, base is gonna be the background that we're gonna keep all throughout the design. And then the container, that is the one that's gonna be containing the form. So if you just look around all of these canvas, you're gonna see the exact same layer structure. And that's what's gonna help us be able to create that smooth, smart animate. The second and most relevant aspect about this responsiveness trick is that oftentimes you're gonna run into situations where you're gonna to wanna to create some additional screens that are gonna be appearing in between those predefined breakpoints or right before a breakpoint hits. Now, this is important because sometimes you have to make some adjustments in the ways that the layers are gonna be behaving based on that responsiveness. 
And you want to introduce those in a way that it's not going to disrupt the flow as the prototype is ongoing. And I'm going to show you two specific examples where this is happening in our form design right now. The first example is related to the change in text size of our header. And that is happening when we are hitting our 768 pixel breakpoint. Now, if you will recall from our last video, I mentioned that Chakra has two scales of typography for different breakpoints. And so what happens when you reach the medium breakpoint at this scale is we're going to switch from heading large to heading small for whatever text size specification you have, right? So if we're looking at this one, you can see that right here we have a text size of heading large, large. And what that essentially means is that we're gonna be decreasing the size a little of our headers so that they don't look overblown on smaller screen sizes. Now, if you'll notice what I did is we know that our breakpoint here is 768 pixels. What I did is I added an additional screen here that is exactly an extra pixel, so 769 pixels. And the reason why I did this becomes intuitive when we start to reason how Smart Animate works in the first place. If we wouldn't have added this screen, we would have had a jump straight from 992, which is our previous breakpoint, all the way down to 768. And what Figma is gonna do is it's going to be adjusting that text layer all in between. But in reality, your product is not really gonna work like that. It's only going to kick in that change in typography only once you hit the 768 pixels. So what you're trying to communicate is that up until the very last pixel where your previous breakpoint still takes relevance in the way that your design works, you wanna keep it that way. And then just when you hit the breakpoint, that's when you wanna make the change. And we're gonna look at the final prototype right after I explain the second situation where we wanna introduce this exact same logic for a different reason. And that is to communicate on how this form here should behave when we are reaching smaller screen sizes, when the available width of the screen is smaller than that of the original form width. And so what we did here is I've added an additional screen at 448 pixels that we didn't previously have before specified as a breakpoint. And I configured it as 448 because as you may recall, our form is going to be exactly 400 pixels. And then that form is going to have to maintain a spacing on left and right of 24 pixel margin. And so moving forward to our last breakpoint here, this is gonna be a default mobile screen size at 375 pixels. And you can see that the main difference is gonna be besides the fact that the screen is smaller, there is going to be also a change in the way that we handle our layer structure. And that is gonna be related to our form. You can see that now the auto layout is set to left and right. And we are able to do that because all of the inner layers of this auto layout are now gonna be set to fill container, which means that no matter what the size, what the width of that form is going to be, all of the inner layers are going to be adjusting accordingly to that change. And so if you see now, if we were to resize this container or the base entirely, I don't think it would make a difference. You can see that now here is the expectation that we want as we're gonna go from here to here. Right, so by changing the layer structure, we are able to communicate to Figma and to anyone who's gonna be consuming that prototype that once we reach this state where we get to 448 pixels and we have that spacing in between, we want to actually maintain the margin of the form on the sides so that that remains consistent across all of these smaller screens. And just before we get to see the final result, there's actually one more scenario where we are doing some additional adjustments and that is going to be when we are changing the container all the way to edge to edge. Now, this is gonna be another example where we had to find a 992 pixel breakpoint, and we wanted to be able to communicate that up until the very last pixel of the previous larger breakpoint, we wanted to be able to maintain that container styling and then just right after it kicks into the new breakpoint, that's going to go 
edge to edge. If you have a look at the prototyping tab here, you'll be able to see that all of these screens have a very simple smart animate configuration where we have a 500 millisecond smart animate to transition between screens. And the trigger for that animation is just going to be a one second delay for it to all play without having to really interact or have to do anything. It's just gonna show that responsiveness. So let's have a look at the video and we can just briefly comment on top. So as you can see, no more clunkiness. Everything is adjusting as expected. The text styles have adjusted as we wanted here in the middle breakpoint. So we can see that again. There we go. And then the form is staying centered up until we reach that point where we want to preserve the spacing here. And you can see that at that stage, we are able to wrap the form accordingly. And then there's just one final effect that's gonna take us all the way back to the beginning. So there we go. And that is it for this week's video. If you found my video useful, don't forget to hit the like button and let me know your thoughts in the comments. As always, I hope you're well, stay safe, and I will catch you in the next one.